you are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday. Halfway point of the week, getting ready for Arkansas and Ole Miss coming up this Saturday. And, you know, it's to say it's an important game, I think, would be an understatement. Uh, anytime you play a game in the SEC West and it's in your division, it's always going to be a very important game. But this one always has a lot more flair to it anytime these two teams meet. And in this particular circumstance, honestly, this might be the battle for second place in the SEC West when it's all said and done. Now, I know it's crazy to think about it that way, but kind of is the truth. Some team is going to leave this Saturday with two losses between Arkansas and Ole Miss. One of these teams are going to be 1-2 and two in conference, or excuse me, I guess have two losses because if Ole Miss loses, they'll be 0-2. Oh but they'll have two conference losses, and maybe the saving grace for Arkansas is that they will only have one loss in the SEC East while Ole Miss will have two losses in the SEC West. So this is going to have a huge impact on the rest of the season, where teams are lining up in the division, and also uh, which team can take that next step forward. Now, Ole Miss is favored by six points in this game, at least at this point in time. The line has kind of moved a little bit, but for the most part, there have been six-point favorites. Uh, We know that this game is being played in Oxford, so anytime that you have to go on the road, especially in this division, it's going to be tough. And we also know that Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin have one of the more prolific offenses in the country when it comes to stats, yards, touchdowns, scoring, all of those things as well. So they they have a lot of advantages. Like They have a lot of things that they're doing really well, uh, but the thing is, is a lot of people point to last year when Arkansas played Ole Miss in Fayetteville and Matt Corral threw six interceptions. <laughs> Sometimes it's even hard for me to think about that. And Hudson Clark had three of them. Like Ole Miss was completely and totally confused by Arkansas in that game. And honestly, Arkansas did not play that well. Because if you think about it, he threw six picks, but yet you needed a pick six in the end of the game to make it a two score game to win it. Like, Ole Miss in the final drive, I guess in the final like three and a half minutes or whatever, they were still in position to possibly win it. But because of that fact, it made Arkansas, you know, offensively, they they had a couple good plays here and there, but they just didn't play the way that they should have and not as effective as they should have. So even when you're thinking about that side of things, you can't really look at last year and why this is going to be similar this year. But the point is, is that Arkansas actually has – uh, a coaching staff that knows how to handle Lane Kiffin's offense. And Barry Odom did a phenomenal job last year, even so much so that Lane Kiffin said in his press conference this week when he was talking about Arkansas that they caused so many problems for him that they shifted and tried to mimic what Arkansas's defense is doing this year to what Ole Miss's defense is trying to do this year. So that's a pretty big compliment whenever you're you know, looking at it from the perspective of, uh, what Ole Miss is, has been doing defensively, and they say, oh, we're doing a complete overhaul and going to try to do what Arkansas is doing because it's so effective. So obviously very, very respectful and a lot of compliments there as well. This game is going to be a weird one. I think that Arkansas's defense is going to slow down Ole Miss's offense. And I try not to look at it from, you know, getting too hyped up and trying to say that Arkansas is going to win this game big. But good grief, like I'm just... I'm looking at the matchup itself, and I can't help but favor Arkansas in this matchup. Like, and this is nothing disrespectful against Ole Miss. It's just when I saw what Ole Miss did against Bama last week, you saw I saw a lot of weaknesses. Now people are gonna say the same thing about Arkansas, but here's the thing: Arkansas lost because they got shell shocked, played like the worst game ever. They committed penalties. Like they, they, Georgia was a better team, and across the board and probably the best team in the country, but Arkansas just completely took themselves out of the game more so than anything. Ole Miss, you could tell there's a lot of schematic things that can be taken advantage of if you're Arkansas. Like, for instance, uh, defensively, Ole Miss had no response to Alabama's offense. Like, they, they couldn't be physical up front, which I think that Arkansas offensively can be very physical up front and being able to rush the ball effectively. 
I also think offensively Ole Miss, as good as they are, anytime they face a very physical defense, uh, they find themselves in kind of a tough matchup. It's it's not easy to go out there and just, you know, with the players you got and roll them out and, and play at a high level like, you know, you do every single game, or at least that's what you're planning to do every single game. It's not easy to do it that way. But we know that Ole Miss's offense, as good as it may be, when it faces a defense like it did with LSU or like it would, or excuse me, with Bama, or like it would be with Georgia or uh, last year when it faced A&M, it was not effective, or at least not as effective as what it normally is. And even LSU last year, I think Matt Corral threw five interceptions against him, them. So, you know, there's just certain elements to the Ole Miss game where I'm like, it could go fine, it could be okay, but at the same time, there's a lot of reasons why Arkansas might be a lot more physically up, physically dominant. And when that's the case, I'm always going to go with the more physical team. Arkansas is a more physical team. Arkansas's defense is better than Ole Miss's defense. Ole Miss's offense is better than Arkansas's offense. But I believe, though, when it comes down to it, I'm going to see a, we're going to see a lot more of Arkansas's offense being more effective against Arkansas or Ole Miss's defense than we would with. Ole Miss's offense being effective against Arkansas's defense, if that makes sense. So, I don't know. I'm excited about it. It's going to be a weird game. We're going to talk about why this has been a weird game and a weird matchup uh, for so many years here in just a second. But first, I got to tell you about betonline.ag, back and better than ever. All the eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back on for another football season. And as always, Bet Online is your number one spot for pro and college football action this season. With the new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device today to sign up to get 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit using promo code Locked On to receive your bonus. From football, basketball, boxing, right down to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of the amazing offers for the 2021 season. BetOnline.ag is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. So head over to BetOnline.ag where the game starts. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast. All right, we'll talk more about the Arkansas Ole Miss series here in just a second. First, I got to tell you about Prize Picks and how it's the leader in college sports daily fantasy. It's the best. It offers more college football props than anyone in the world and offers more of the star players from the Power Five as well as the mid majors that you may not even have heard of at this point. But Prize Picks can offer you any prop from you can think of, from yardage to touchdowns to even interceptions thrown. And all of you that sign up today, you can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 using the promo code code locked on entries can be made in 60 seconds or less it's that easy price picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals so don't hesitate check out pricepicks.com and use promo code locked on or go to your app store and download the app today price picks is daily fantasy made easy so arkansas and Ole miss uh it's been weird <laughs> needless to say it's been one of the weirdest and wildest series in sec history now, I don't use that term lightly. I don't like to throw that around very often. But what I do like to do is look back on some of the games and let's look at the evidence of why this series is crazy. First off, it's about location. Arkansas and Old Milk, closest campus, SEC campus, that is, to Arkansas in Fayetteville. I believe is Oxford still. I don't think it's Columbia. I think it's still Oxford, but still, it's not, it's not too far, especially from Little Rock. Uh, so the proximity is very close by when it comes to uh, the state of Arkansas and also Oxford, where Old Miss resides. And, you know, as crazy as those things are, you add into another few elements as well, where there's been some things on the line when these two teams have played. Most recently, it's been more for Ole Miss, but also uh, there's a few things, too, that were put in place for Arkansas, too, like in some connections and all that stuff and, and all that. But either way, if you look at the series as a whole, Arkansas leads 36 to 28, which, you know, you're singing. I was like, well, that's kind of, kind of fairly close, I guess. It's, you know, eight game difference. But here's the thing. Since joining the SEC, Arkansas's dominated. Uh, when Arkansas joined the SEC back in 1992, Ole Miss has only won, I'm going to count these right on the fly, they've won nine times since Arkansas has joined the SEC. Nine times. Arkansas has won 18 times since joining the SEC. So Arkansas has had a lot more success. And 
you know, it's not to say anything against Ole Miss and like they haven't been good or anything like that, but Arkansas has definitely held their own. And what's funny about this is that Arkansas has held their own during times where Arkansas football was not very good. And so just looking at it in the recent memory, looking at some of the crazy series that have gone on, uh, I think you have to start with the turn of the millennium and getting into 2001 where the seven overtime game happened. At the time, the longest overtime game in the history of college football. I guess still it's technically tied. But Arkansas and Matt Jones going up against Eli Manning and Ole Miss, and Arkansas gets a victory 58-56 and seven overtime. So just a crazy wild game there. And then you move on to, say, for instance, the 2008 game where it was in Fayetteville's Bobby Vitrino's first year and Houston Nutt was at Ole Miss, and Ole Miss comes into town, and we knew that it was going to be hyped and a lot of energy for all of the you know, fans and stuff that hate old, hate a Houston Nut, myself included. Uh, Ole Miss was a better team, though. Like, that team, those teams were loaded with talent. And Arkansas actually had a chance to win the game at the end because the final ended up being 23-21, but because of a uh, pretty terrible offensive pass interference call against London Crawford at the end of the game, kind of turned it a little bit. Uh, Ole Miss ended up winning the game after that. So frustrating, but still, it was a big game that meant a lot. And you keep moving on into like the 2011 game where Arkansas was on the road and in Houston Nuts' final year. Uh, Ole Miss got up 17 to nothing, really started getting after it, but then Arkansas turned around and came back and won 29 24 over Ole Miss. 2014, 30 and nothing. Arkansas destroys Ole Miss and, and shuts them out after shutting out LSU. The next year, the Hunter Henry heave in 2015, 53 52, Arkansas wins in overtime. The next year in Fayetteville, the Chad Kelly game, where uh, Pia, when, uh, of course, his, oh man, his name just escaped me. Uh, Santos Ramirez. Yeah. Santos Ramirez goes and knocks out uh, Cole Kelly on a fourth down play and happens on fumble the ball. And Arkansas ends up winning in that one. The next year, Arkansas's only win in the SEC, Arkansas was down by like, I think it was like 30 points at the time, comes storming back, and Arkansas wins the game in Oxford 38-37. And then it's something on the other side, too. Let's be honest. Uh, Ole Miss beats Arkansas in Little Rock, Chad Morris's first year, where Arkansas had a big lead, and then Ole Miss came back on them in 137-33. 2019 was not nothing crazy about that one because it was uh, just pretty much the end of the Chad Morris era, so we don't want to talk about that. But then last year, you know, the six picks, 33-21, Arkansas gets the victory there and takes care of business. So those are just a few examples. The point is, is that this series is always crazy. It's always wild. Arkansas, more often than not, actually gets the victory over Ole Miss, and I know Rebel fans were sick and tired of losing to Arkansas. And in fact, it's so dumb that if you think about the times that Arkansas actually – lost to Ole Miss just here recently. The only to- only times that they've lost when it mattered is when Ole Miss – when Arkansas had Chad Morris, which was just – I mean, they lost everybody. They were awful. And then other years were John L. Smith's and Brett Bielma's first year where they pretty much lost to everybody. And then the few years before that was in 08-09, Bobby Trino's first year, two years, and Houston Nutt's first two years when Ole Miss had arguably one of the most talented teams in the country. So it's like even the games that Ole Miss has won – it's been with weird circumstances going on for Arkansas, or at least not, you know, not the, not the circumstances you'd like to have. And I don't expect this game to be any different. This game's going to be crazy. And there's probably going to be weird stuff that happens. There's probably going to be, you know, fumbles and safeties and blocked extra points and craziness like that happening. But this series never disappoints. It always adds up to have some entertainment I'm going to be curious to see which team bounces back after getting destroyed by their previous teams, whether it was Georgia or Alabama. And that's going to be the ultimate uh, test for both teams to find out who's going to finish second in the West because this this game and whoever wins it's going to have a lot, and I mean a lot of indications, heading into the final stretch of the season. We'll get into our final segment of Locked On Razorbacks here in just a second. First, I've got to tell you about the Built Bar and the latest and limited time flavor, the cookie dough chunk. That's what it's all about. I love cookie dough in every way, shape, and form, and Built Bar is no different. It's great tasting. It's only 17 grams of protein, 130 calories, and they also have nine other delicious flavors that you can choose from. So there's something for everyone. Just pick out which one that you like. Check them out. I promise you won't be disappointed. It's healthy, it's easy, it's convenient, and it tastes great. Go to BuiltBar.com, use rock promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your first order. Again, use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. Go and check it out right now, BuiltBar.com. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast. Okay, final segment of the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. This was a fascinating stat 
uh, that got put out that, uh, I mean, I wasn't aware of, or I don't think anybody was aware of, but we know that Arkansas and Georgia last, last weekend didn't go very well for Arkansas. And they had college game day there and everything. And like, I was all excited and for at least Razorback fans and all that. Here's what's crazy about it, because I always find television ratings fascinating. According to the numbers posted on Tuesday, ESPN averaged nearly 3.85 million viewers for the game, which edged the network's Auburn and LSU broadcast later that night in viewership. So it had 3.85 million viewers to that game, more so than any game that night. And an average of more than 3.79 million watched Auburn rally for a 24-19 victory into that game. Prior to that weekend, Arkansas's victory over Texas on September 11th was the most watched game on cable this year with an average audience of $3.4 million, or $3.4 million. But also, ESPN College Game Day scored its biggest audience of the season last Saturday with nearly 2.1 million people tuned into the pregame show, which was, of course, in Athens, Georgia. And Arkansas and Georgia was the fourth, was college football's fourth most watched game of the weekend. Where CBS won the day, of course, uh, with a victory over Ole Miss, which that's always going to average a lot more. Michigan, Wisconsin averaged more than that, and Wells, Penn State, and Indiana got there as well. So either way, I was really impressed to see the numbers of that and see how high they were. And uh, I couldn't, I mean, again, it didn't go Arkansas's way, but it showed how many people were tuning in to watch the Razorbacks and to see maybe more so watching Georgia. I get all that. But still, it's something that's cool that you can hold your hat on and be excited about if you're a Razorback fan, at least, uh, you know, pound your chest. I don't know. Do something with it. But it's still very interesting to see nonetheless. Appreciate everybody listening in to the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then. You are Locked on Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast. 